Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. It's part six of Project Ultron. There's been a bit of break in programming over Christmas and with Star Wars coming out and doing the BB-8 projects and everything, but now we're back on track with Hulkbuster and Ultron. So we're back to Ultron this week. Um, last time I made this flexible spine out of Ninja Flex blocks and other 3D printed parts. And this time we're going to be working on the main sort of pistons at the front of the abdomen there that will hopefully bend this all around to make it quite organic. Now I've been quite limited by the way Ultron looks. It doesn't actually have a single spine at the bottom. So we've got this double spine, but that does help to make it quite stable. So let's take a closer look at what we need to do this week. It's quite important to watch part one of the series to find out what I'm trying to do. Essentially, it's a full-size Ultron torso which is going to be partly controlled by motion capture and partly by its own AI. So I built a motion capture suit and tested that out on a mini robot arm early on. So what we've got here, as I said, is some NinjaFlex parts, which are 3D printed rubber-like material. And we've got this spine, which I can tension with some strings. And that needs adjusting later on, but this means it can twist and move all around. So the aim is today to put some linear actuators on the front that we're going to make which can adjust the sort of abdomen. Now we're pretty limited by how Ultron looks. So we've got essentially what looks like two pistons and another thing at the front, something that looks like conduits at the side and various other silver panels, which will eventually go on this red core, which is basically because Ultron is red in the middle and silver on the outside. So let's have a look at that linear actuator design. Here's a linear actuator design I did before, and that was the, for part four for the series elastic actuator testing. So have a look back through that part to see what this is all about. Essentially, this drives force as this turns, and then I can also measure the force with this sliding element, and I can make it back drivable so that the uh, joint can be pushed around or tense up if it wants to. So for the linear actuators for the abs, I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna make a straight screw thread, but I do need a better way to attach it to the motor. So here I just used a captive nut inside and a screw, um, but it is still possible that that could get pulled out over use. So um, obviously we don't want the whole thing just resting on the motor shaft. And also this needs to be quite strong. So we don't want any um, sort of point there where it could bend. So we need to make, basically mount a better lead screw on some sort of bearings that's a bit more robust because it's got to hold up the whole robot. So I've got my lead screw here and what I've done is put a gear on the bottom which you can see there. So the actual lead screw is going to be driven by the motor and the motor isn't going to be mounted directly on the end of the lead screw. That's quite important so it means that I can actually put um, a piece of 8mm metal studding through the middle of the screw to make it nice and strong and mount that on bearings at each end and then I can put the motor off to one side to drive it and we haven't got all of that force of the lead screw pushing and pulling on the motor only on the bearings. So this is the nut which I think is going to go on here, but I do need to add bits to that to actually um, have an actuator sticking out of one end essentially that goes around the mounts. So I'm going to print the lead screw first, um, see how that looks, get the uh, rod in the middle and look at some bearings um, and then we'll work out how the rest of it fits together. Okay, so I've printed a pair of those, in fact, so they've come out quite nicely. Um, obviously, 3D prints are quite weak along the build lines often, so this could snap quite easily if I put too much force on it. And that's another reason why I've put this hole in the middle, which will take this piece of studding, which is 8mm threaded steel, and that will essentially go all the way through. It's pretty tight at the bottom, but nonetheless, so I need to cut that to length, put a nut on each end, so this is effectively suspended on a steel bar, and then I can run that steel bar on a bearing at each end which will be attached to the sort of plate for this whole thing and that will cause this to run really smoothly and be really strong. So then the next thing will be to have a motor mount going this way with another gear to drive this gear so we get a further reduction. This is a 300 rpm motor so that should be more than sufficient to drive this. Obviously there's a pair of them so all the lifting will be done in tandem and sort of leaning side to side will be done by growing one and shortening the other. So I need to get some mounting plates designed for this and some studding cut up and then we can think about mounting that motor and putting the nut on which of course needs to push a rod out of the other end essentially. <laughs>
So I've printed these plates to sit the um, shaft on there, so um, I've got a couple of them for left and right, and there's a hole there so that the gears can actually go through and poke out the other side so they're not restricted, and obviously I've got bearing blocks and the plan is to put caps on the top of that so this thing can be spun. And the plan was with this side piece, of course, to put the motor off to one side there with a the gear, and that'll turn that, and everything's lovely. The only problem is that I need to put a nut on here that goes up and down, and it's got to have forks, essentially, that push past this part. So, um, of course, this is uh, in the way, basically. The motor doesn't allow this thing to be wide enough, so I need to mount the motor somewhere else. Um, and also, these are quite chunky, actually, compared to the size of Ultron, so what I've done instead is printed one without the side piece, this mounts in in exactly the same way and the plan is going to be um, either to put the motor on the top of this so that it doesn't restrict the sides or of course it could go on the back there and drive that gear. So I need to do two things, one I need to get a gear to fit on this which will mesh properly and see what height that needs to be and how it can be mounted and I also need to make the nut thing that pushes the sort of forks past the block at the end which will actually be the actuator output. I've printed this block now so that as I wind the thread, of course, this block travels up and down the screw thread. And there's a little gap in between the two. They're not really tight, but they're tight enough that it works well. Um, and I think that's going to be okay. So one plan I had was to put a bearing on each side to run this way so this block doesn't scrape on the base. Um, but I think it's probably going to be okay. Most of the friction is going to be against the thread and against this. Um, it may push this either way as it turns up and down, but hopefully that's uh, not as much friction as actually lifting the whole robot, so I think that's negligible basically, but that could be a design improvement to have a wheel each side to stop this scraping on the base. So what I've decided with the motor, instead of mounting it this way round, I'm going to mount it this way round so it doesn't interfere with this at all, and the motor mount can just be on the end of this, which is where there's also going to be a hinge which holds this against the base or against the torso of Ultron. Obviously this is going to be flexible at each end. And I've printed a gear here, which fits on that motor. It's still got the brim on from printing, which just peels off. And what I've done is embedded a nut in a slot there. So I've got a bolt that can go all the way through, and that can just be popped onto the motor, which has a flat on the shaft. This is a 300 RPM geared motor already, so that can be screwed up and that's pretty good. So obviously I need to cut this bolt down and cut a slot in the end so I can make a grub screw to screw it in and it doesn't interfere with the gears. Ah, but that's a pretty good fit on there, so that's how that's going to work against there. So all that remains is to make the motor mount and a couple of forks basically that come this way so that I can actually mount the other thing on the actuator of the output of this. Here's where we are currently with the design. So the red part is the new part and the gray part there is the part I just showed you. So effectively that's um, sort of like a fork arrangement. Obviously it's got this um, coupling with two holes on just nearest us there to attach to either end of Ultron. So um, that of course is free to slide up and down and it fits to the holes I already left in the main block so that it can be screwed on on there and again on the front here. So um, that should be fitted on pretty well. I may well solvent weld it on as well. All right, so uh, one extra design improvement, of course, could be running this in a slot, which runs um, on the side of this lengthway. So I just showed you putting, putting that bearing. We could have a couple of bearings along the side and have a top on this whole thing and have the red part running in a slot so it doesn't flex up and down. So hopefully that's going to be all right. Um, it's obviously a design improvement I could come back to. If I was building an actuator for any heavier sort of joint, then I probably would have that feature to keep everything in line and reduce friction. But for now, I think it's going to be okay. So this is the part that I've just printed and I've fitted one already which has screwed on quite well there and there and the two screws in there which have aligned perfectly. 
I left a 0.3 mil gap between the parts in CAD, but they're a fairly snug fit. And now, of course, as I rotate this, the thing goes up and down. So I put the tops and the bottoms on these as well to hold the bearings in and everything's pretty firm. Now there is a bit of wobble this way, which is what I was talking about having this thing running in a rail with the top on and some bearings in here to keep this nice and firm. Uh, but I don't think that's going to be an issue for this part as I say. If it really is then I can come back and obviously change the design. But for now that's not going too badly. So that just remains to... Uh, Put some things on the ends to actually hold it. Obviously we've got this part here. I need something at the bottom and also need to make that motor mount. So some of the motors I've bought have actually got an offset spindle. So um, I can mount this pretty much centrally and then turn the motor. And as I do so that will bring the gear further and nearer to the other gear so I can fine tune them. So that's actually quite useful. So I'm going to make a combined motor mount that screws onto these four screw holes. And probably these two. And is fitted on top here. And that's also going to be the pivot point for this to attach to the chassis. Here's the motor mount and it fits on this end. So what I've done is left it in a kind of C shape so that I can put a nut and bolt through and tighten that motor up so I can adjust it and tighten it up in position. And what you'll notice I've done is aligned that bolt hole with the screw hole in the very bottom piece there, or at least the bottom and top piece, that hold the bearing in and that means that when I take that bolt out I can get a small screwdriver in so I can still get to that screw which is quite important if I ever want to change the lead screw or get the bearing out or basically take it to pieces so that screw is not restricted. I've also put this piece in the end here which will be solvent welded on and that will allow me to mount it into a Ninja Flex bushing and mount that to the chassis so that fits into a little recess that you can see just there so it makes a nice tight strong solvent weld so let's get those printed and see what's next. Right, that part is fitted and you can see I've just offset the motor there slightly by turning it to get that nice and tight. So you've got the motor mount there, I've got the piece that fits in there to solvent weld on, which is the mounting. But for now I'm just going to give this a test. So if I just get a battery, I've just got a 11.1 volt LiPo and give that a spin. It's a bit lumpy, but obviously this thing is rattling around. Eventually it'll be um, on load, so it's actually not terrible at all. Um, and it's actually really strong, so if I try and restrict this from uh, opening up, I can't actually stop that from turning by grabbing it with one hand. That's extremely strong. I could obviously make this go twice as fast by increasing the pitch of this, and because it's 3D printed, that's really easy to do. I'm probably going to end up running these motors off 24 volts. Um, although I don't know how much motion I need, I think this is probably um, quite an excessive travel for what I need to do there. So we'll have to put this together before we can tell and do the control system. But on the whole I'm pretty happy with the force that can convey. This is the last piece which is a bushing basically made of Ninja Flex, so it's flexible. And this is going to bolt through the main hole onto the chassis that I built last time. Then it's got these bolt holes to attach this to the actuators I've built, so I need a pair of these. And they're going to be printed in a fairly high density infill in Ninja Flex on the Lolzbot Mini with the Flexi Struder. You can check out my channel to see me fitting that to the printer. So I now have a dedicated printer for doing Ninja Flex. It has a 0.6mm nozzle and it does a pretty good job of it. Here's my Ninja Flex part, so it's quite uh, quite rigid, but it's actually rubber that I can flex. So that should make a flexible mounting, um, but I can still basically bolt that down. So of course that goes uh, right on there. I'm going to actually bolt through with a couple of bits of 8mm studding. There's a hole in the bottom there to bolt it to the chassis, and I've left a little recess for a washer. So we'll get those bolted on, and then we'll see how much they'll flex around. These are now mounted on Ultron's chassis and what I've done is use some 8mm studding and just cut a slot in there so I can screw it in. So in fact that piece goes all the way around and out the other side. And these can be moved at any angle but I think they're going to be um, located like that. I've aligned those gears slightly better. I must remember to print gears without the brim on that holds them on the print bed. So I've moved the brim so it's off the top of this gear. And now this runs a lot smoother than it did. 
So these are quite flexible, they can be moved all around which is good um, due to those flexible bases they're in. There is some wobble between this which was I was talking about before but actually these are going to be braced out because the shape of the front of Ultron kind of comes up towards the torso. Um, the motors here are going to be partially covered by the grey thing at the bottom. Have a look at some pictures of the movie Ultron on Google Images. It's kind of a wider thing and then a thinner thing in the middle and these again will be covered by curved sections that come up that give that cosmetic front. Um, obviously around the back we've still got that red spine which is fairly naked at the moment and that is going to be covered again with silver panels which are all articulated so that it can bend around in different directions. Then at the sides of course we've got those other conduits that come up which sort of start at the front where it's got a quite a wide torso and then they come up the sides right up into the torso. That's the end of this episode. Next time I'll be coming back and starting work on the upper torso, which is the mounting for the shoulders and some of those crucial parts. So this will be really starting to take shape. And of course that's mounted on these three towers that we've got and it'll be able to move around as these actuators change length independently or together. So even though these move quite slowly, I think I only really need about 50 mil of travel and at the moment they do 100 and they are right down at the moment. So they're going to have quite a long reach for Ultron to look right up and right down on small children when I do shows and things like that. So don't forget to check back next time for updates on this project and check out my channel for other projects. There's also social media links in the description to this video, including a link to my new Instagram account where I'm building followers quickly and you can see sneak peeks of other projects.